Hello, this is Walter Leite, and in this video, I will show how M plus is used to specify path analysis models and some of the defaults that M plus uses when uh, running a um, path analysis model. So for this example, I'll use this article by Trella et al. Maternal behavior prior to parenting as a transgenerational predictor of spring behavior. The model that the authors are fitting is this model here. Now, in this diagram, the authors did not show the disturbances for the two endogenous variables, childhood behavior problems and adolescent behavior problems. And the authors also did not show correlations between exogenous variables. So, in M+, plus, the, here we have uh, an analysis of the correlation matrix, uh, which I specify with type equal score, um, and the sample size is 2,548. Um, now, the, this is the simplest specification. I am mentioning the two equations of the model. Um, with the two endogenous variables. So A, B, P, I, S is adolescent behavioral problems uh, and is predicted by child behavioral problems, mother behavioral problems, mother's education and socioeconomic status. And C, B, P, I, S is child behavioral problems predicted by mother behavioral problems, mother education and socioeconomic status. Note so that here I do not mention um, the variances of the exogenous variables, which are mother behavioral problems, mother education, social group status. I don't mention any correlations between the exogenous variables. So what M plus does is M plus does not add these variances and these correlations between exogenous variables as parameters in the model. So it's like the, those correlations didn't exist. Um, so they don't get into the count of pieces of information in the model. Now, M plus, by default, we will estimate the disturbance of the two endogenous variables, even though I did not mention them specifically here. Okay, so I'll run this model and we have uh, nine parameters being estimated, um, which are the direct effects plus the, the, the disturbance variance for child behavior problems and adolescent behavior problems. The degrees of freedom <laughs> is zero. So this model is just identified. Um, now, how come? Well, there are... The, the way M plus does this is, okay, so for a correlation matrix between five variables, right? There are five times four divided by two. Uh, so there are 10 pieces of information. But M plus does not consider the correlation between these three correlations here between the exogenous variables. Therefore, they're not pieces of information. So the only pieces of information in this model are these four correlations here with CBPS, the, and the three correlations with, uh, with the between ABPS and, and um, the other three variables, and also the, the two variances here. In this case, they are one because it's a correlation matrix um, of the endogenous variables. That adds to nine. Um, and therefore, you know, because you were, you end up with nine piece of information, there are nine fit parameters and the degrees of freedom is zero, okay? So this model is just identified. 
Now, it's possible to force M plus to use the entire covariance matrix. Okay, so I'll show another example. So with this model here, it's the same model, but now I specifically declared the two residual disturbance. Now, this is not necessary because M plus would estimate them anyway, but I also declared the variances of the exogenous variables. And these variances now force M plus to consider the variances in, in the data as pieces of information. And I also declared the covariances between the exogenous variables, also forcing M plus to use the covariances in the matrix, in the covariance matrix as data. So if I run this model, I now have 15 parameters instead of nine, and the degrees of freedom is still zero. How come? Because now M plus is using the entire covariance matrix because I, I forced it to do to, to do that by declaring the variances and covariances between exogenous variables. So the the number of pieces of information here uh, for a, a covariance matrix is um, the correlations we have, the number of correlations are um, five times four divided by two, so 10 correlations plus five variances, which we have, here they are one because it's a correlation matrix, therefore gives us 15 parameters, and we are estimating 15 parameters. This gives a degrees of freedom of zero. So it's exactly the same model as before, just estimated with more information. The results are exactly the same. The parameter estimates that are common between the two models are exactly the same. Okay. Now I will also show how M plus uh, does some of the defaults. Um, so I have another model here where <laughs> I deleted one path from the original model. So I deleted the direct effect of child behavior problems on adolescent behavior problems, right? So the original model had that, um, had that path, right? And the original model had nine parameters and was just identified. So I deleted this path here that I put on the comments. Okay, now let's run this and see what happens. Okay, so the original parameter had the original model had nine parameters. I deleted one. We should have eight parameters, right? Well, no, there is still nine parameters, and the model is still just identified. What happened? Well, what happened was that by Make it, removing the only path between two endogenous variables, I trigger a default in M plus. So by in M plus, by default, okay. any endogenous variables that do not have a direct path between them have disturbances that are allowed to correlate. So what M plus did by default was to add this residual correlation here, the residual correlation between child behavior problem and adolescent behavior problem. I did not ask for that. I did not put that in the model, but M plus added it by default, which made the model just identified. Um, so it's important to be aware of that, uh, that M plus by default, if there are endogenous variables with no direct paths between them, M plus will make their disturbances correlate. If that's not what you want, you need to specifically add um, a constraint here, ABPS with CBPS at zero. 
okay, to, to make that correlation disappear. Now, I will show you how, how you make the model be non-identified because the degrees of freedom is negative. Okay, so, and, in, and actually I'll make it in a way that it's also non-recursive, mm -hmm. right? So here I have the original model um, where I have CBPS with a direct effect or ABPS. However, I also added the residual correlation. So this model has a feedback loop, okay? Um, this model, even if I had some extra degrees of freedom, this model would be non-identified anyway because it's non-recursive, like there is a feedback loop, and I don't have any instrumental variables to help identify this model. However, on top of that, this model is not identified because my degrees of freedom are negative. So this is what happens. When I run it, I get this message the degrees of freedom of the model are negative, so it's not identified. Okay, so that is um, how a non-identified model looks in M+.